This video is about cholesterol, so let's dive into the arteries of our friend here to see what's going on. You can see two molecules, the LDL and HDL. There are actually hundreds of things floating around, but these two are relevant to your heart and blood vessels. Starting with the LDL, if we break it open, we'll see that it contains fats, specifically triglycerides, cholesterol and a few other fat-based substances. Same is true for HDL. If you break it open, you find cholesterol and other fats. So effectively, HDL and LDL are fat taxis. They carry fat-based substances to where they're needed in the body. So they're on an important job right now. Now, if we look carefully at this LDL, it's going to do something strange. It somehow got through the artery wall, settled there, and is dumping its cholesterol there. And now other LDL particles seem to be following suit. Surely that's not what they're supposed to do. And as you can see, the space in this artery wall is getting bigger as more and more LDL particles diffuse into it. The situation is getting out of hand, but luckily your blood has a police force. It's called the immune system. And on their usual patrols, they notice that something strange is occurring. They see these LDLs just hanging around in the artery wall and they think this is a threat. So what they do is launch an immune response. They enter the space and swallow them whole in an effort to diffuse the situation. But they don't make it any better. In fact, they make it worse because they get stuck there too. Soon this process repeats and we're starting to have a mess in this artery wall. This process is called atherosclerosis. You might be wondering, what about HDL? Well, HDL actually works to try and reduce this inflammation by removing LDL slash cholesterol from the atherosclerosis. But in this case, the HDL can't stop it from growing. Now you can see why LDL is called bad cholesterol. They find it at the scene of the crime, clogging up the arteries. Both cholesterol and the molecule that delivers it to your arteries, LDL, the fat taxi, together became the bad guys of heart disease and strokes and peripheral vascular disease. In 1984, this was a cover published by Time magazine, an image that set cholesterol as the enemy in people's minds, the cause of heart attacks. But let's just take a moment and look at this so-called bad cholesterol. There's something we should know. It's created by the liver every single day, starts off life full of triglycerides and cholesterol to deliver them to where they're needed. Remember, it's a fat taxi. So it takes the fats to the cells all around the body, just like an Uber does. This is essential for life. The LDLs then go back to the liver to get recycled. The cells are happy and the job is done. Does that sound evil and can it possibly justify the term bad cholesterol? You can see that this term itself is actually absurd because this molecule is essential for life. There's nothing inherently bad about it. But how can an innocent molecule like this be responsible for one of the leading causes of death in the Western world? Here's an interesting concept. What if LDL is not a villain, but under certain conditions, it can actually turn into one? Now the million dollar question is, what's making that happen? Well, I'm going to introduce another chief dietary villain. It's called sugar slash simple carbohydrates. When you ingest significant amounts of sugar, that can change the metabolic environment of the body over time. A hormone called insulin that rises in response to sugar raises and stays chronically raised. And over time, you can develop what's known as insulin resistance, or at least a precursor to that, which means you're not able to use this fuel very efficiently. There are several markers of this decreased metabolic health caused by what we just mentioned. They're called high triglycerides, low HDL, and insulin resistance. There are others too. It turns out all of these correlate strongly with a specific change in the characteristic of LDL particles. They're all associated with smaller LDL particles. The explanation or mechanism for this is complicated, but in this metabolic environment, the LDLs are not taken back up into the liver as easily and they end up staying in the bloodstream for longer than they should. This is now a different kind of LDL. According to many studies, this is a more dangerous form. And here's the crucial point. These small dense LDLs find it significantly easier to enter the artery wall and cause the process that we mentioned at the start. In other words, small dents are more atherogenic. And there's ample evidence that a metabolic state like insulin resistance causes all kinds of inflammatory markers to go up. You don't have to remember these, but uncontrolled blood sugar is simply bad news for the vascular system. 
Think about what a person with insulin resistance looks like. They have central obesity, a big waist to height ratio, which is a very strong predictor of heart disease. This has been known for a long time. The correlation is also very strong. They have low musculature, related again to the skinny fat distribution, which involves more inner or visceral fat, even if they look thin from the outside. And of course, they have a reduced ability to control blood sugar and insulin. So as you've seen, there are many things that a metabolic state like insulin resistance can do to the arteries and the LDL particles. This in part has led to this new line of thinking that fat itself is perhaps not as dangerous as sugar and simple carbohydrates. But one thing we can be sure of is that we must be mindful of the true universal villain of the dietary world. Subscribe to Infonostica to get regular updates to enlighten you and your family.